Hello, this is Victor and I'm here with a new video where I want to give a little bit my vision on the age of Sigma rules and all these different opinions and all, all. I've been watching different videos about opinion and some veteran players giving their opinion about the new Warhammer Age of Sigma. And yeah, and I wanted to also share my point of view as a player, occasional player, but I've been involved in Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy uh, for a long time, for 20 years. So I have passed through different uh, editions in both games. So, and I also see similarities in some changes that have occurred in the past, especially in 40k. So I want to give my point of view, what I see here, what is surprising me, and yeah, and what I expect in the future on, on this game. So also working and building up on some of the comments that I have written on internet. I didn't have the chance to play yet. Tomorrow I will go for my starter kit. I will start using it and I think it's yeah, I will I think I will start using it with my son to see how it's playing. The rules look quite basic and I think they, they are a good starting for people a good entry point for people starting in this hobby. So let's go. First, comment that I see a lot of, of Warhammer Fantasy players. We say the game is closer to 40k. I will say, yeah, the movement and the roam bases are closer to 40k. But all the other things was the other way around. And I, I have seen the same complaint from the 40k, 40K players uh, for a long time. So when 40k moved from 2nd to 3rd edition, it moved to it moved to match some rules of the fantasy. Uh, and over time, 40k is incorporating more and more and more fantasy rules into it. So 40k and, and Warhammer Fantasy always had very similar mechanics. Uh, we, they had the same stats, and I think no, it's more different than before. Yeah, the movement is very similar. We have lost all these complex movements that we used to have in fantasy, and uh, also the combat results with the pursuing and all this type of stuff is changing a lot. But yeah, uh, it was uh, for me it's as close as 40k as was before, and they changed some mechanics and now are in 40k and will not be there. 40k is not using a lot of modifiers, and I see that we still use modifiers, for example, in Age of Sigmar. So, yeah, the movement is closer to 40k, they move like in 40k indeed, but in 40k all the units move the same. It's not the same in, in Warhammer Age of Sigmar. We have different movement for each unit, uh, while in, in 40k the, unit, the movement depends on the type of unit, and all the humans, elves, Dwarf all move the same, and they, yeah, I will say that there are similarities, but they always win these similarities. So, yeah, it's for me, it's like a, a, a kind of, of fun thing because 40k players complain that uh, the game is getting closer to fantasy, and fantasy players complain that it's getting closer to 40k. And for me, to be fair, I don't care. I want to look for, uh, for rules, and if they use the same rules, it will be good as well for me. So I don't see what is the issue that is getting closer to 40k from my point of view. Then we see that there are things that are simplified a lot, but I think there are other things that are more complex than before. And it's where they try to add some more complexity. Movement is the big simplification, and I think that this was needed. Movement, for me, the movement in fantasy was a pain. A pain and a room for a lot of mistakes and a lot of taking advantage when it's not nonsense advantage. Uh, all the mechanics of movement, depending if it's fast cavalry, if not, and what you can reform, you cannot reform, so reform, all these type of rules. How to pivot is a pain. You know, it was also difficult always to measure how much you pivot. At the end, you arrive to a compromise. Okay, I will say that these are three inches. But all this movement was a pain for me, and I think simplifying the movement is a good is a good thing. People are saying that this is killing the strategy. I will say that the the positioning of your units on the battlefield are going to be key anyway. How you put them on the battlefield, in what order you put them in the battlefield, I think these are going to be key. In 40k, 
a lot of fantasy players say that it's too simple, but in 40k, if you put wrong your units on the table, you are a screw up. So you have to know also how to put your units. So, yeah, movement is being simplified. I think for me, I love it, the simplification on the movement. And now I want to see how it works. Uh, we have to say that a lot of battles have been played, a lot of the battle reports also have been played in small tables, what makes that the charges are very easy to be done in the first or second turn. Uh, there is not a such comparison, and this is yet a big simplification. Normally, we were used to have uh, weapon skill versus weapon skill, strength versus toughness. This is no modified, and we have to hit and to wound rules. Uh, it's it's a simplification and makes that you you are not depending on your opponent to know what what are your opportunities to to wound and to hit. There are maybe less modifiers or the modifiers are simple, but I'm not sure here because they also we also have the cover modifier in Age of Sigmar. Yeah, we don't have negative modifiers to hit. See, is a big difference. Uh, I don't think this adds complexity because on the other side we will see that we have other rules that are compensating this, and we don't have options for the characters. The characters come as they are on the on the scroll, so they are not options to uh, tailor made your um, general or to tailor made your BSV. They are non magic items, and the magic is very simple. So all the characters construction is being simplified a lot, and I like it as too. And I guess in future we are going to see more complex things. This is my guessing, but I don't know for sure. But today, yeah, these are the other big simplification. They simplified a lot the characters and the units uh, in terms of making the unit of the characters. What is more complex from my point of view? So the monsters, no, I think this is a thing that is having overlooked, but the monsters change the profile of, uh, depending on the wounds that they have received. And this is very neat, and I would like to see this also in 40k. So, uh, it's interesting to see that the monsters are losing their efficiency and they are slower and they are less strong and they, are, uh, they have problems when they are wounded. And I think it's a good compensation of the big monster against the infantry. So now, yeah, the, the uh, infantry unit is losing efficiency because they use models. It's good that the monsters are losing efficiency when they lose wounds. Another, special, another thing is that now all the units have... All, uh, they own special rules. Even the bowmen from Betonia have a special rules. In the past, this was much simple. And now you, you will see that all the units have some special rules that if you use them in the right moment, will make this unit more dangerous. So, yeah, I, I will say that overall, yeah, it's simplified version, it's more simplified, but there are some things that are changed and are adding complexity in other parts. Other thing that uh, people was complaining, we only have four um, attributes now. It's not two. So in fantasy, we used to have movement, weapon, ballistic skill, strength, stuff, and initiative, wounds, attacks, leadership, and maybe armor. But now we have move, wounds, safe, bravery. We have attacks, because in the profile you have the attacks. We still have to hit and to wound, and we have the rent if you apply it. And to hit, you have different profile if it's to hit with a ranged weapon or if it's to hit with a close combat weapon. So this makes that in the past we used to have 10 attributes, now we have 9 attributes. 10 if we count damage, and I put this into brackets because damage in the past also we had uh, multi-wound um, uh, weapons in the past, so I will keep this outside. We have 9 against 10, so the big loss, if we compare um, attributes by attributes, move is move, so it didn't change. Ballistic and, and weapon skill have changed by to hit. The big difference is no, you don't depend on your opponent, but you still have to hit with uh, all these weapons. So, And this is changing from guy to guy, and yeah, I know maybe the change is not big, but uh, in the past, this is the other thing. We see a lot of battles that are uh, dwarf against elf, uh, elf, for example. And we and we always in the past when we were fighting infantry, we always hit on fours or threes. Normally, most of the battle you were hitting on fours or threes. And if you were hitting against a superhero, then you were hitting on fives. 
So I don't see big difference with this nader. So normally all the guys have three, fours, or five to hit. So it's more or less the same. Uh, and the same uh, where it's much easier not to hit is on ballistic skill because in the past we have a lot of modifiers. Now you increase the armor of your opponent if you have cover. That is not the same. That in, uh, is not the same rule as in 40k. It's completely different. So. Um, I don't see that it's changing a lot, except that no ballistic skill is not as bad as before. Because you always hit with your archers between 3, 4 and 5, you don't have 6 or 7 normally, as we used to have in the past. The past was very discouraging when you were trying to shoot your bow and you were hitting on 7s or 8s, depending on, on, on the modifiers. Uh, yeah, In the past we used to have a strength and toughness, now we have to wound and rent. So toughness is out. But uh, we have to wound and to rend, depending on the weapon. So these two combine also you the strength. So rend is modifying the armor of your enemy. So it's part of the strength that we used to have in the past, the modifiers of the strength on the, on the weapon. So again, we have two variables to play with and to make a unit more or less efficient. Initiative has disappeared and with the new mechanics make no sense. Wounds, uh, yeah, we still have wounds. Attacks, we still have attacks. If you look at the profile, you will see that you have a number of attacks per guy. Leadership is changed by bravery. It's a completely new rule, but we still have something similar. And the armor is substituted by the safe, and the past was also safe. We don't have no uh, armor safe and war safe. We have a safe, one safe, and I think this makes sense. Uh, I know people were complaining because we have we, we roll three four times for save. We have one plus rollable plus the war save. Oh, come on, guys, it's better one save. And if you pass pass, and you pass not pass. We'll say also the wounds are part of the toughness of the pass. So in terms of variables and what you how you can play with the variables is not changing that much from the pass, and it's not that simple as we have looked. We only look the four main things but we forget that in the same uh, war, uh, battle scroll or on the same in the same uh, profile we have all the weapon description and how what is the the, the percentage to uh, the the dice you need to solve to hit and to wound and, and the number of attacks what is i see what is the thing that is puzzling me more and what is confusing me more on the new rules is the army creation this is the thing that I think, I really think that we are playing at test rules, most likely. I'm pretty sure that uh, Games Workshop in the future will give points to everything. If you look the battle scrolls, you will see that you have options there. So, the, the for example, the Empire, uh, the Statal Regiments, they can take uh, Sword and Shield, they can take Halber Shield, they can take Spear Shield. And they have different profiles. What is the sense? You will take the best of the three of of these three weapons. Why you have three different profiles? I'm pretty sure in the future they will pay points for the equipment. And the same for the characters. I think we we are going to see more in the future more uh, special equipment and more things. So I think we see here an extremely simplified version of the rules, where all the equipment, all the options are given in the battle scrolls. And I, I will, I, this is my guess and my bet. I think in future we are going to see a points on all these options. It's like the having the champion in the unit is no, no is there as an option. You can take it or not for, for your unit. Why will you not take it? If you have the miniature, why will you not take the champion on the unit? What is the, the reason? So you will have it to, there. So these are things that are. I think we are going to see in in close future. The other thing that is, I think it's a big, is not working, and I understand why Games Workshop did that is the the measuring from the miniature. I think they put measuring for the miniature to avoid that the people have to rebase everything. Yeah, I don't know what is worse, if measuring from the miniature or rebasing everything. So far, I will try to measure from the miniature, and both cases have advantage and disadvantages. So measuring from miniature is one of the things that is criticized a lot, and I can understand uh, people can 
can use the the position of the mutual in their advantage. Uh, but I will say that I think this is a, a good solution at the end uh, um, to avoid that everybody have to rebase my army. I prefer this solution that to be the need to rebase all my escapements or all well, all my armies. So yeah, the only solution to avoid that was to have a, a standard basis for everybody and of, oblige everybody to change the basis to run basis or do something like that. In that way, uh, if not, you also people can take advantage the size of the basis or can can use the size of the basis in their advantage. So let's see how this evolves. These two points. So the army creation. Pretty sure we are going to see points somewhere in 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 future. And measuring from the miniature, we'll see how this evolves, and what are the house rules, what it takes. But yeah, if the tournaments they start obliging you to to change all the bases, or you have to put a supplement at the bottom of the bases with the with a circle, something like that, yeah, this can also minimize this impact. Things that are new, and I I think I overlook, and I like them. One of the things that uh, and here I write it wrong, is close combat. One thing that is, is overlooked, I think, most of the times is the possibility to disengage from the close combat. I think we, we this open a new tactical uh, options up to now, any of the games from um, Age Workshop, you were able to disengage except if you have a special rule. But now in this game, you can disengage easily from the close combat. So you only at the, at the uh, start of your turn you decide to disengage and then yeah. So and then you move out. So and there is no roll, there is no, nothing need. So you say decide to disengage and you get out of the combat. And these are open possibilities to use a screening units, for example. Imagine that you have a very weak unit on the front that is absorbing the charge. And then you have another your elite unit at the back waiting to for your turn. So in your turn, you just disengage the weak unit in the front and charge with the strong one. So this opening other possibilities that I think people are, are overlooking. And the positioning, again, we see the movement is very simple in Age of Sigmar, but the positioning is going to be more important. And this is why my guess. Also in close combat, the positioning of your units are going to be very important because you can hit any enemy that is in, within the range of your weapon. So you don't need to hit the unit that is attacking you. If the, you are engaged, if the engage is quite complex, you can hit the unit that you want and you can split the attacks as 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 you want. So yeah, uh, the positioning is going to be important and to be able to disengage is also going to be very important. Other things that I think that are quite different is all the interaction of the heroes and, and the generals and all these type of things, they will interact more and more with the units and they have a lot of special rules to interact with the units. I just was reading the battle scrolls for, for Bretonia. There are a lot of different interactions that you can use there. Uh, from the uh, the, who is the 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 sorcerer, the, the lady that can heal wounds to the general that can make uh, that can give the order to to avoid the the effect of the bravery. So there are a lot of of orders there and a lot of special skills that uh, they will make the interactions more complex between the units. And I think this is also quite uh, overlooked sometimes. So the heroes are not going to be there just to to be a beast on close combat. They are there also to boost your units. And then the the thing to roll each turn who is first. I think this is going to be also to to change the way we play. So these are things that uh, I think is where we are going to see a little bit the shift of the strategy in Warhammer Fantasy. So we'll go from pure movement and positioning to the positioning. I think is going to be key. Is still be key. Uh, the orders of how you interact with the heroes and all the ranges. So you have to be uh, and this this will. They, they tell you how you what to cool, uh, put your units on the table, and yeah, and also the uncertainty to know if in the next turn you're going to be the first or the second player. So yeah, there is another complaint that was for me quite fun. That is, especially uh, being um, 40 kill players, that 
People is complaining that they have to move a lot of units. And I understand, normally in fantasy, we have double units, do double of no number of miniatures than in, in 40k, more or less. But in 40k, we have armies that have a lot of miniatures on the table. If you play Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum, you will have a lot of miniatures. And nobody is complaining there that they have to move unit uh, miniature by miniature. So it's quite curious to see how all our, how it's called this, our use, our way to play in the past is, is making us to complain some on things that for other players this is not a, a problem at all. So, and at the end, if you have a lot of issues because you want to move your 200 uh, uh, slaves, scavenging slaves, put them on a tray and then you move them all together. Nothing is pre nothing is stopping you from doing that. So indeed, in the rules, they don't forbid this. You can put them even in ranks if you want. Or you can rank them as you want. Or you can create your own formations and put them in the formations that you want on the shape that you want on the table. And make your... If, like if you want to put them making a circle, you can put them on the table making a circle and make your base in a circle, uh, doing like a circle. So, yeah. So don't constrain yourself. You don't need to keep this one inch. And you can put them base to base, and you can use the tray with the shape you want if you want to move them all as a one block at the end. Just be careful that the block have exactly the same positioning at the beginning and the end. If not, will people will consider that some miniatures are moving more than 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 what is allowed. So, yeah, this way I, I just want to put in some some of my point of views. I, I need to play to see how the mechanics work and. Yeah, and I also see that uh, they are announcing, or we have uh, rumors that a new book for Age of Sigmar is coming. It looks like more a scenario. I'm also looking forward to what is in there. But the thing is, they start adding a scenarios and objectives because one of the things I'm missing here also are um, the S scenarios on different objectives. Up to now, uh, all the scenarios is I want to kill you unless you have the sudden victory or uh, objectives. But most likely is I want to kill all your army. This is uh, the objective. I think uh, in future we are going to see more objective on the table. Remember, this is like um, a very basic rule. It's like in in if you have the starter set and you only have the small booklet that is telling you how to play with very basic rules. We have this, for example, in in Dark Vengeance. You word you. Um, by the Dark Avengers, you open the cage and inside there is a very small booklet with very easy missions that are very, that are most of the time unbalanced, but the only objective was to show you the mechanics of the games. I have the feeling this for pages is that. I have the feeling this for pages is this small booklet that normally goes inside of the starter kit to show the people how the game is played. And I expect later on to see more elaborated rules in, in this game. So this is uh, my point of view. Uh, I hope you give a try to the game. I think it looks interesting. I think uh, people overlook some of the complexities that is not really uh, uh, on the rules. And I think more of the complexity comes from the interaction of the different units. And if you read the rules, you will see that they are units that are interacting each other. I, I, yeah, I know that the army creation is a big issue or the big problem we have now with this game and I expect that this is going to be solved. I don't think Games Workshop will leave it on just grab as many miniatures as you want and put them on the table. I think this will change in future and I expect that we are going to see points. I know that more skeptical think that they, it will never happen. Let's see. Let's bet there and see what happens in future. But I'm pretty sure in some point we are going to see more. Uh, we are going to see the points, and we are going to see a, a more competitive uh, side of this game. So that's all what I wanted to share. So uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please leave your comment below. Uh, don't be too aggressive. Uh, it's just an opinion. Uh, we are here to to. Take some easy time to enjoy these games. And if you don't like the game, there are more options out there. But so far, as I have the miniatures and I invest some time in this hobby, I will give a try. I will play. And at the end, I think if, uh, if, 
yeah, I think uh, we are going to see new players on this game. I think it's making the entry to the hobby quite easy at this moment. So thanks a lot for watching. Please give a comment below, opinion. Uh, like if you like it. And see you again later. Bye.